Right, this is a recap of session 16 of my Castles and Crusades campaign. Uh, this one we had four players. We had, uh, and the characters were uh, Lork, uh, the half orc ranger, Orvon, the half elf knight, Barry, the human wizard, and Agrax, the dwarven barbarian. Uh, with them, uh, so with this adventure, they were following up a uh, and they wanted to explore the ruins of the Dark Mirror, which was a quest they got uh, several sessions ago um, th from the very uh, odd uh, goblin named Krugnot, who provided them with a map of uh, uh, in the swamp where this ruin was located. So they uh, and this one day, this is what they wanted to do. So uh, before they left town, because they were short on uh, characters that could. Uh, uh, cast healing spells and they knew that they would probably need them. They recruited the help of uh, a cleric friend of theirs named Aiden LeMay and uh, he joined them along with uh, Brea who is Barry's henchman and she's a ranger. So they left Arden. Uh, it's winter time in the in the setting right now in the campaign and uh, they're on the road and this they were headed to the mining town which is a booming operation now that the goblins have been uh, taken care of from the mine. And they knew that would be the, based on their past exploits, and they knew leaving from the mining town to go into the dark mirror was the best uh, way to go. So they went to the mining town. Uh, on their way to the mining town, uh, the mine, that road it, it hadn't been used much, but now that the mine is open, it's used a lot. And uh, along the way, it's a, by foot, it's a four-day journey from Arden to the mining town by uh, cart and horse. It's about two days. So along the way, there's been established waypoints where people will camp. And it's a little slower now because uh, it's winter. But um, So they used those waypoints to camp, and they didn't really have any issues. Uh, at the morning of after the first day, because it's only going to take them a couple days to get there because they're mounted, um, they came across an ogre that had stumbled onto the road and he was a particularly stupid ogre and he was trying to set up an ambush and he didn't notice the players, their characters at first. So this was a perfect opportunity um, for Orvon, who's a, again a knight, um, to use his uh, mount and lance and it's the first time he's been able to do that. I know he's, uh, the, the player's been wanting to do that so I kind of threw this in here giving him that opportunity. So he rode down this ogre and, uh, and hit him. Uh, they, there was a little bit of a battle. He left the party behind, so he got a few rounds alone with the ogre and, and did pretty well. Took a little bit of damage, had it almost killed when uh, Lork's animal companion, Fenris, who's a, a warg that's almost full grown, uh, caught up with him and finished off the ogre. Uh, they continued on. Um, Camped another night, then the following day, they reach the mining town, and they find it fairly active, pretty active, actually, um, and it sits along the river. Uh, it's actually split by the River Inbus, which runs out of the mountains where the mine is. Um, while they're there stabling their mounts and animals, because they know they can't take them into the, into the dark mirror, other than Fenris, um, they, are, they are met by uh, uh, Durgan... Ironhelm, who was the dwarf that they rescued from the Goblin King. He'd been a prisoner there for 30 years, and he's doing a little bit better. He's a little more filled out, and his hair's starting to grow back. He has a short beard now, because all of that got shaved off to try to sh the shave him, uh, shame him by the goblins. So they talk to him. Uh, they go to this uh, uh, Wiggins ale tent and have a few drinks with him, which Barry, who's perhaps a budding alcoholic um uh gets right into and they let him they tell him what they're up to um he offers to help them by providing them with some porters and uh some canoes that they're going to need eventually because they know they're going to get to a section of the dark mirror where it's just one big body of water and they can't wade through so uh which they graciously graciously accept accept so while they're talking to him they learn that uh, the, recently there's been a team of miners that were in a deep section of the mine uh, exploring that 
and they've disappeared. So they, that kind of piqued their interest. So I, they may head that way if uh, later on uh, after this adventure. Um, that's something they may look into. Because they did find out later on when they got back that the, those miners were still missing. So I think they might go that way, but they got to let me know. So they uh, strike off into the dark mirror on foot. They got four dwarves that are carrying their canoes for them. Initially, because Lork's leading, he, uh, the, the player, my son, didn't roll all that well. So he didn't necessarily get lost but he because he's been this way before. But he didn't pick the best route for them, so they got bogged down. It's cold and it's wet and fairly miserable. Um, he had a little bit of help from Brea, who's a, also a ranger, uh, a couple levels lower than him. But she rolled, I, I rolled for her and rolled better than he did. So she was able to help course correct him to get him through there, uh, through the swamp on a better direction. That's a little bit easier. That night, they can't. They have to camp another night. That night at camp, Lord feels pretty bad, so he he is um, uh, t t setting up a really good camp for them, trying to dry all their clothes and equipment out, and and he does that. While they're camping, they're sitting around the fire, warming their bones. Uh, I rolled the for a surprise attack, and it happened to land on the wizard Barry. So there's, they were sitting in this area here. Uh, this is a board that I made a long time ago. My son and I actually made together. And uh, this thing, this giant toad out of the darkness, hit him with his tongue and just snatched him back and began to swallow him. And I, and I boosted this thing's stats a little bit uh, and its abilities from what's in the uh, Monsters and Treasures book. But um, so when the rest of the party, you know, realized what happened, they look and Barry's legs are basically sticking out of this uh, giant toad's mouth. And uh, in the next round, he ends up getting swallowed, and he starts taking damage on the inside and um, while he's inside from the stomach acid. And he can't do anything. In, in the description you, for the giant toad, it says you can't even fight back because it's so tight in its gullet. So he was stuck um, in a pretty bad spot, taking damage every round. And being a third-level wizard, he doesn't have a lot of hit points, so it was getting pretty dicey. Um, but they were able to uh, quickly... Uh, finish this giant toad off a little bit faster than I thought they were going to but uh, it worked out um, It was a fun encounter um, And kind of set the tone for what was going on for the rest of the session uh, And this thing here is a uh, just a big uh, toad uh, Figurine I guess it's made out of I don't know ceramic or something. I got it off Amazon. It wasn't really expensive I didn't even paint it uh, I put a base on it with some with some aquarium flowers and some uh, static grass just to spice it up a little bit but it was uh definitely uh a, a cool uh, miniature that uh, was bigger than any other uh, actual gaming miniature that i had for what i needed so that worked really well um once they got past this they got through the rest of the night without much issue uh aiden did some healing for them and they continued on until the following day or so, until they got to the edge of the this giant bog lake, and they left their porters to headed back to um, Arden, uh, excuse me, the mining village, and they set off in their canoes, which went pretty well, um, as I recall. Lork uh, led them on a pretty good route, and eventually. Uh, they, they, they came to like, they started to notice that the depth of the lake was sh getting shallower and sp starting to get shallower. Uh, as they approached this, there was this low cold fog that just hung over this area. And uh, as they got closer, it parted a little bit and they start, they see these, this ruin here. So they came in from this way on their boat and they saw this. So they begin uh, cautiously exploring these ruins. So they paddle in. Um, I think this was the first one they went to was here. And they didn't really find anything. They found some old broken stuff. It had been picked clean by the croaker goblins. So they kept, they moved on. They moved over to this next one. 
And in this next one, they didn't find anything of value. And all these basements are flooded. And this whole thing is underwater. Uh, Lort kind of went ahead and, and was exploring this one up here. And um, as he was coming down, and some others had joined him up here. But he went all the way up to the top to kind of also scout around. Um, on his way down, he knocked a tile into the, uh, into the basement and stirred it up. And this um, troll ended up coming out. And it's a Reaper Miniatures troll uh, from their Bones line. Painted it uh, quite a few years ago. Yeah, 2016. Um, this came out. And once again, Barry found himself right in the line of fire. So I, I think he took a little bit of damage and quickly retreated. And then the rest of the party joined the fray of uh, trying to beat this troll. Um, that was a really fun fight. We had... Uh, uh, Orvon and Brea and Agrax finally made his way. Agrax actually shot it first with like a harpoon bolt on his crossbow. So he had a line attached to it. So Lork jumped off here and hit it with in the air with uh, and landed on it. Hit it with its bastard sword, stuck it in there. And then he's holding on so he stayed on top of it after some strength checks. And stabbed it with his knife in the next round. Uh... And when he stabbed it with a knife, it had taken some damage from uh, the others. It killed it. And it fell. I rolled randomly to uh, determine which way it fell, and it fell into the basement. Uh, and it, when it did, it took Lork with him because he failed his save. And it also took Agrax with him, who uh, also failed his save and held onto the rope. So Agrax actually got up there. Uh, un. Uh, un uh, unplanned like he didn't plan on getting up there but he got yarded up there from the uh, troll uh when they fell into the basement lork uh because he failed to save he kind of got pinned underneath the troll against the wall so he was stuck down there with agrax up top eventually pulling him out uh, and while this is going on fenris the, the boat was back here uh he's still in the boat because it's very hard for him to navigate he starts growling, which Barry hears and turns and sees another troll coming up. So Barry starts casting spells. The others turn to confront uh, the second troll. Um, hitting it a couple times, it gets to the base here and starts hacking into their legs a little bit. Uh, Orvon actually uh, uh, rolled a fumble at this point and hit himself. Did a little bit of damage to himself. and um, So they're dealing with that. Lork, who is eventually free, climbs up, and he's trying to make his way around to help out when the first troll regenerates and comes back to some uh, a little bit of uh, life and takes a swipe at him, hits him in the leg, rips his leg open. Um, but they are able to finish it off. They have uh, Barry had in between sessions. He's taken up uh, making alchemist fire, which in the last session he got components for, him and Lork. So he hits the first one with alchemist fire, after Lork drops him again, I think. And that I just ruled that that stopped it from regenerating and killed it. So they're just really dealing with this one here. And that one <laughs> got finished off in spectacular fashion. Uh, Agrax runs off the thing, off the top of that, this ruin here. Runs off from here and does this big cannonball. And uh, using his, he's got a dwar uh, barbarian ability. lets him do like epic feats and stuff. So he... Does that, so he gets a bonus when he does stuff like that. So he runs off, jumps, does that very well, and then hits it with his bearded, bearded axe and scores a critical. And so with the system that I'm um, using out of the options in the Castle Keeper's Guide, I have him roll again, and he rolls another critical. So on the chart, on the one we're using, which is option six, we're using option six, he gets max damage times four. So he ends up doing like, I think it was 64 points of damage. He just crushes this troll. And we I ruled that he split him from the top, he split it from the top of his skull all the way to his crotch, right in two halves. He lands in between them, getting gore rained down on him, which as a dwarven barbarian he loved. And uh, then they end up killing it, finishing it with fire, making sure it doesn't come back. It was a really great um fight and a great moment for uh a lot of the characters all of them and we all enjoyed it it was actually well played out by like barry was utterly stunned by the devastation that he caused and that the 
Agrix caused and uh, couldn't stop commenting on it. It was really great. Um, so when they finished that second troll, they, they continue to explore these ruins and they'd mostly been picked clean. Didn't find anything really of value. So they get over here to this raised area, this rocky raised area coming up out of the swamp and it's got all these, it's got a dais on it and these statues in it. When they found them, all the statues were faced outward. So they, and uh, they, they start investigating this a little bit. They find it curious and they realize that this center portion here is a portal, um, not a magical portal, but it, 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 they think it'll move like, but they, it has no means of no sign of like no handles or anything that would indicate that it, how they can move it. So they start messing around and it was Barry, I believe, got the idea. It was Barry. He got the idea. Well, what if these statues move? So Barry goes to move one. He doesn't have the best strength because he's a wizard. And uh, he rolled a one. So I actually ruled that like, he kind of sprained his wrist trying to reef on this uh, statue. But he does think it might move. So Lork, and, uh, who's much stronger than Barry, he goes over and easily moves it. And he turns it. And he continues to turn it until it faces in. And it was this one in particular. And he, when he does that, he can hear the stone blocks grinding. And so they, he kind of works his way around. He turns all of them. He goes in this direction. Uh, he turns this one, nothing happens. When he turns this one, he hears it uh, grinding and uh, moves to this one, nothing. Still doesn't open. So they figure, they go back and uh, might have been Orvon uh, says, well, maybe like these two are supposed to face outward. And he was correct. So they move these back and the portal opens. And inside they find this is basically inside it's hollowed out. It's partially a cave and it's partially built up much like this stonework here that's through all the terrain. And in there they find uh, a sh on this shelf uh, like all these different treasures. They find um, gems and gold and uh, some clothing, this gossamer silk hood, uh, a, an ivory pipe that's shaped like a, a dragon claw holding an egg, which Agrex later on kept as part of his treasure. Uh, he didn't want to sell it. And, uh, oh, and they find uh, this gourd that's carved in the shape of a frog with its mouth has like a little open spigot and it has liquid in it. And Barry cast detect magic and the uh, gourd radiates magic and it ends up being a um, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's basically this uh, I got it out of the monsters and treasures of aired book But it's a gourd and in it this liquid heals uh, 2d8 hit points worth of damage it can only be done once per day and it, It's an all-or-nothing thing like they can't take sips off it and pass it around You just drink it and you get 2d8 hit points back. So which Barry ends up keeping that um, after, after they decide on who wants to have it so They've collected all the treasure, so they come out. And when they come out, over here, perched on the top of this, is an odd figure that Lork had met once in the past, and that is this key pine named Otan that they, Lork and Ronan and Rothgar in an early session, much earlier session, had encountered in a, in a bandit camp um, and made a kind of a odd... Uh, alliance with I guess so Otan basically tells them that this place was once called Thanderlane and it was uh, the home of people from the Fey realm and either the evil of the swamp drove them out or something you know something killed them but they haven't lived here in a long time um, and he also goes on to tell them that the Fey are have started to enter their realm and he's not sure why he also tells them that when asked that he, the portal that he used to come here is close to him, and he is also searching not only for those Fey, but for a way home. And uh, Lork, he kind of directs his stuff at Lork. He speaks telepathically to all of them. They all hear him, but he's directing it at Lork because he's familiar with him. And which they've kind of had an interest in why this Fey, because they've had encounters with Fey, Otan, uh, Full Fire, the Fey Knight of the summer, uh, summer queen. And they're just kind of wondering why they're in this realm, in their realm. So, 
Uh, he tells Lorik that if he wants to contact him in the future, that in the northern homewood there's a giant oak, and if he goes there, he will come. And that's, that's where we ended the session. They end up returning to the mining camp and uh, without issue. It was a fun session. Uh, in this session, Agrax level up to third. I did a previous video um, where I said he was third level, and I, we were wrong. I was wrong. He wasn't. He was only second level. So he is now third level. Um, that was the only level up. Uh, Barry's close to being a fourth level wizard. Probably another couple sessions he'll be fourth level. Uh, I think everybody else is a ways out. I know Lork is because he's moving towards fifth level. So he's got quite a bit to go, but hopefully we'll get him there. Um, real good session. Terrain I used was a mixed thing. Like over here was the board. I built this board myself. Like I said earlier, my son and I um, built that out of uh, just scrap and some molds for the stonework. The... Uh, this ruins, this is all from uh, Tabletop Troubadours, uh, Hagglethorne Hollow. I backed their Kickstarter way back when, and I got a ton of this stuff. This is actually the first time I got to use the ruins. Um, I've been using the buildings for any time they're in Arden. Um, players really seem to like the style. I hadn't got a chance to use it as much as I would have liked. Uh, these trees, these trees here are from Tabletop World. They're from their Graveyard Kickstarter. And these were some... Uh, these are 3D printed ones I bought a long time ago and just never flocked. Uh, the statue and the dais, all that is tabletop troubadours, Hagglethorn Hollow stuff. Uh, that I built, the, the base that it's on. The boat is from Dwarven Forge, which is a, it's a actually a really neat boat. And what else? I think that's about it. Like I said, all this stuff is from tabletop troubadours, Hagglethorn Hollow. Pretty cool. These little statues, I get a bunch of these, and they're all different, as I recall. So they're really cool looking statues. Really neat. The miniatures, mostly Reaper miniatures or Dark Sword miniatures. Yep, that's what those are. Um, all painted by me, including the, the two trolls I used. Those are, one's a Reaper miniature. Actually, the other one's, uh, the second troll was a Reaper, uh, not Reaper, it was uh, WizKids. But, uh, yeah, so we'll be playing again and shaping up to have hopefully a bunch of sessions uh, this coming up. Maybe up to four by the end of the month if all goes well. My uh, son is off to college at the end of August, so I'm trying to get in as much gaming with him uh, before he leaves because uh, he's going out of state for school, so he won't be around to play with us, which is a bummer for sure because he's been with us since he was 10 years old at least probably earlier and I've been gaming with him before that so he's been at least in our in our group since he was 10 and uh he's grown into being one of the best players at the best players at the table and a really good uh game master in his own right um so I'm gonna miss him when he's gone but yeah so this was a session um oh the mat who made this map this is a deep cut studio map their swamp mat um really nice mat uh vinyl one which I'm actually starting to like the vinyl ones you gotta the thing with vinyl I, I like this mat but the thing with vinyl is you gotta weigh them down for a while so they get the kinkles out you can, re, you can reverse roll them but I still find that doesn't always work as well uh, the neoprene ones are nice too I have a couple of those they're nice they're just heavier but I like them because they just roll out and they're good to go so I actually will probably start getting more neoprene mats but uh, yeah that's what we did uh, yesterday and uh, thanks for watching